In 2013, the government published a report on a baseline audit for government health facilities. 3,880 facilities were audited during this process. Of these, only 32 complied with infection control guidelines and only a quarter of clinic staff had a positive and caring attitude. 93% of maternity facilities did not have the necessary equipment to ensure mother and baby treatment safety and only two facilities could guarantee general patient safety. This is a grim picture indeed. The 2014-15 national inspections of 417 facilities by the Office of Health Standard Compliance showed that only 3.1% of facilities were considered compliant. Another 13% of facilities were conditionally compliant. 67.6% .6 of the inspected facilities were non-compliant or critically non-compliant. In the NHI white paper, it is stated that health facilities that meet nationally approved standards will be certified by the Office of Health Standards Compliance to render health services in the NHI. If this office performed its mandate with these inspection results, only 16% of public health facilities would currently be operational in the NHI. At the unveiling of the white paper, the Minister of Health once again indicated that 80% of specialists are serving 16% of the population in the private sector and that this inequitable distribution is unacceptable and will be changed by the proposed NHI. Actual research figures published by Econex in 2013, which was also used in the Department of Health's own Human Resources for Health publication, shows that between 28 and 38 percent of residents in South Africa utilize private health care. 41 percent of specialists work in the public sector, with 59 percent working in the private sector. The data in the NHI policy papers, which is used to try and justify radical changes to the healthcare system in South Africa, is thus incorrect. The NHI is actually a funding model and is like a huge medical scheme. Imagine a medical scheme with about 25 times as many members as Discovery Health. Government's administrative incompetency is clearly demonstrated by the compensation fund. This fund receives about 8 billion rand a year in income and currently has 52 billion rand in assets, most of which is administered by the Public Investment Corporation. Between 2012 and 2015, the fund paid out claims between 1.4 billion and 2.1 billion rand annually. In April 2015, in answer to a parliamentary question, the Director General of Labour reported that there were 231,000 outstanding claims, amounting to 23 billion rand. But they plan to have this backlog cleared before June 2015. So in two months, they plan to pay more claims than in the past 10 to 12 years and to distribute half the fund's total assets in those two months. The compensation fund employs 1,630 people who paid out 1.4 billion rand in medical claims last year. By comparison, Discovery Health, which has five times the number of employees, paid out 26 times the amount in medical claims. The NHI budget is 32 times larger than the compensation fund, and total claims payable are likely to be 100 times more, not including payment of suppliers. The NHI fund would therefore have to employ between 52,000 and 160,000 people. If the government is unable to run an 8 billion rand fund efficiently, how would it possibly manage a 256 billion rand fund?